So now in this video, we're going to make a 50% duty 555 timer A stable mode circuit that uh, I got from my data sheet. So first we're going to look at the NE555 and if you saw my previous video, that's the only integrated circuit that uh, I used in that video. So I ordered LMC555 timers because that's the data sheet that I got it from. But uh, this is not LMC, it's TLC. 555 and I overpaid for this I wasn't paying attention to the quantity I paid about $14 for four of these when the uh, LMC and other similar ones you can find like one to two dollars or something if you look around a little bit so in any case this is still gonna work for this video the uh, TLC 555 so first let's do a quick uh, recap of what I did in that video in case you didn't see it or just as a reminder so we are wiring the uh, 555 timer. We have to power it. And uh, pin number one goes to the negative rail. Pin number eight goes to the positive rail. And the pin layout is the same for uh, this 555 timer or the LMC. So you can just uh, pull that one out and then plop a different one into its same spot. Pin number four down here is the reset pin. It's to the positive rail. That prevents it from doing anything. And so what we did, we have to look at the voltage of a capacitor at two pins. So that's going to be pin number two, the trigger pin, and then pin number six up here, the threshold pin. And so we take a capacitor. I find 47 microfarad works really good for this video. And uh, so I'm going to plug that in there. Negative side of the capacitor, it's polarized, has to go to the negative rail at least to a more negative part of the circuit than what the threshold will reach and the negative rail uh, fills that uh, very nicely. In fact, for this circuit you need it to the negative rail, but it's polarized. You have to make sure that side's always more negative. Now, the only other thing we need for this circuit is, in this case I'm using a light dependent resistor. Its resistance changes based on how much light is falling on it. You could use a fixed resistor too, but in any case when the light level changes, its resistance will change. And so we can quickly make uh, different things. So you may notice here that we have slightly less than zero volts. Zero volts is that yellow line there. The power supply is off right now, but even while it's off, it outputs a slightly negative voltage. So that's something to be aware of. If you have this power supply, I'm gonna hit the uh, power button now, and uh, now you can see the voltage went up. We are not seeing that uh, terribly good. So there we go. And you can see that we have five volts because each one of these squares is one volt. And so there's zero, and one, two, three, four, five. Now we're gonna go to the output and see what that is doing. And there we go. It is bouncing all over the place because it is pretty bright. Also, I'm gonna jump this back to the positive rail and then go back here. You can see we got five volts at the rail only like three and a half volts at the output. That's what's causing a problem and that's why I have this other uh, 555 timer because it goes to the rail at the output. And uh, so we will look at that. But in case, you can see duty is about 67%. So even though we have the same resistance charging the capacitor and discharging the capacitor, as you can see, the output does not go to the rails. And what the uh, threshold pin is doing, it's taking the rail voltage and when the capacitor discharges to about one third of the power supply voltage, then the output goes high and the capacitor starts charging. Once it gets to about two thirds of the power supply voltage, the threshold pin jumps into action and sets the output low, which discharges the capacitor. That's why it's bouncing back and forth, as you can see here. And again, we can turn the light down so you can see the waveform a little bit better and we have a little bit of a slope at that point too. Uh, it doesn't get uh, right up to its uh, voltage. But in any case, what we're gonna do now, we saw that, we can also look at a load. So I'm gonna take an LED here. I'm gonna put the long lead, the anode, above this jumper that goes to the negative rail, short lead the cathode down one, and I'm gonna take a one kilo ohm, 1000 ohm resistor, put it to the Long lead the anode of the LED and then the output. And you can see it lit up 
it's flashing pretty good and uh, camera won't pick it up terribly good but there now you can see it flashing in uh, sequence with what you see on the uh, waveform there so again that's the NE555 this is the more common type of 555 timer and uh, I'll turn the power supply off and we'll probably see it dip into that negative voltage again right there you can see it slide down so there's probably a capacitor in the power supply that uh, discharged and then got slightly slightly negative so it's a bit unfortunate but in any case all we have to do is pluck a, a couple things get them out of the way and I find it's best just to get a screwdriver there and you don't lever it to pop it out you just kinda slowly slide this in and try to work your way to the other side and it comes up so now we have the TLC 555 timer if you have an LMC it should work the same and uh, we're just putting it right in the same spot it'll be the same wiring and so I haven't put this in the board as much the the legs the pins usually stick out a little bit and you gotta kinda squeeze them before you first put them in the board and uh, now it's not as used to the board I think I bent it that's not good alright I think uh, there we go that's good enough now we gotta put that jumper back there again that just lets the two pins monitor the exact same voltage which is what the capacitor is charged to in relationship to ground it's looking for one-third and two-thirds of the power supply voltage that we have there now we bring the light dependent resistor over there and uh, that's it the LED is just floating over here we can remove it but now let's turn the uh, power back on the 5 volts and we got to put this up there to measure it right there for the oscilloscope and there you can see we got that there let's turn the light down so it's a little less obnoxious and I will turn the dial there we go to kind of speed up how fast it goes across there but uh, there we go now I can slow it down it's averaging everything what we see on the screen is that indicated by that bar there's also all of that data being recorded so way off to the side we could pause this and slide it over but there you can see that we are holding 50% uh, uh, fairly well right there if we add a load though we'll take the LED again and uh, I'll shift that over so we can see a little bit better if we take the LED put the long lead the anode up one row short lead the cathode to that uh, ground jumper there and then the one kilo ohm resistor I think that's a one kilo ohm resistor we will put to the LED and see how much that throws it off so it looks like okay the uh, duty went up a little bit so it's throwing it off a little bit but you can see it's still a whole lot better than it was with the uh, NE555 timer so that was using bipolar junction transistor as an output this one's using CMOS transistors as an output so it does better as you can see here though this particular load is throwing it off because we're feeding the output to the uh, capacitor so all we have to do is remove that and uh, it goes back to 50% uh, duty so we could just give a weak signal to a transistor or something and amplify that signal instead of taking power directly from the output and then whatever uh, this naturally does will be applied to a load better so in any case that's really about it I thought I'd get around to making a diagram but I don't really know what else to put on there I could, I could just make a schematic of the circuit and whatnot and so I'll look at the differences between these uh, two 555 in more detail now just remember the one I'm using now where we can get the 50% duty as you see there so 50% it's high and 50% it's low with just a speck of difference as you can see there this is the less common of the 555 timers also the outputs going to 5 volts and the uh, we can speed this up another thing I want to look at is I'll slow down the time that it slides across here and 
you will see that now it's kind of like a picket fence looking looking thing where where it's not flat on top and there we go I can get this display to go off if I hold down that button for a little bit but there you see little spikes and it's not getting all the way up to uh, 5 volts anymore so it's not perfect and so you got to kind of play around with it if you need to get that rail to rail output and uh, whatnot but uh, in any case Hopefully you still found the video interesting. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.